I genuinely forgot to film today. If I didn't ask myself, where's my phone? It would have never dawned on me that I didn't film anything, and I would have forgotten to read the Bible, and then it will be the next day. It's already like 8, 10 p.m., so it's already getting late. So I'm just going to read uh, Romans chapter 5, and then we will call it an evening. All right, here we go. Romans chapter 5. Oh. This is so sweet. I think that this was my grandfather's Bible. My, uh, this is my mom's dad's Bible. And uh, my mom's mom passed away uh, last year in June of 2019. And it has my grandmother's name. And it's written in my grandfather's handwriting. It says, Karen, who was my grandmother who passed away. Karen and I have this hope. And he circled the word hope. Well, let's read about it and see what my grandfather was speaking about when he was talking about my grandmother and, and himself having hope. Chapter 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Karen and I have this hope. Now my grandmother's in heaven and she's just she's just waiting for us to uh join her. But I think that she's more uh excited to be in my own God that she's not even thinking about us. And I don't want her to think about us. Because if she thinks about us, then she's also thinking about the world. And right now she is busy on her knees praising God, and that's what we all want her to be doing. Plus, my other two grandparents, my dad's parents also died, uh, died last year. I think they died a month, a little, a little over a month apart. Once my grandmother passed away, my, my grandfather couldn't live without her. Um, and he, he just, you know, just kind of gave out. It was a hard year last year, but all three of them are in heaven. Um, and I can't wait to see them. Chapter 3. Oh, excuse me. Verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience, experience, and experience, hope. It's kind of like with this uh, sewer situation, my mom and my dad and my brother and myself, I, I have learned a, a little bit since being on my own and kind of being forced to accept change. But when there's change, it can be very, it can rattle faith, you know. I'm not, I'm not saying that my mom and my dad and my brother are like, oh, Lord, you know, why, you know. They're not doing that, but they definitely wish that none of this happened, but it's, but, you know, the sewer situation is a tribulation. It's a form of tribulation. And it says, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, just be patient. It'll be back to normal by Monday or Tuesday. And patience, experience, and experience hope. So the more they have patience, the more experience they have, and the more hope they will have for the next, you know, the next tribulation. And, of course, me, I mean... I can't relate as well because, you know, I, I live in my own place, so I don't have, I don't fear, you know, I can't use the bathroom. I have to use, a you know, a bucket. And that's like, that's terrible. And I, of course, I, I've used it a couple of times, but as I said before, my job kind of requires me to be around using a bucket, so it's like not anything weird to me. But anyway, let us continue to verse 5. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. My grandfather wrote, Wow, with a heart. Let's read that again. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. 
when when we are saved, we are given the Holy Ghost. I think that's how it works. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure my mom would probably clarify it. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. He didn't die just for those that believed in him or followed him or loved him or you know knew that he was a son of god you know i think that what was on his mind was saving everybody but you have to accept and you have to believe and i think i made uh, i made it clear in one one of my videos about um you know not taking it literally like oh the lord died for me i'm going to heaven like it you 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 have to accept him and you can go on Google and type down the sinner's prayer, and that is the prayer that, um, you know, y you can read, not necessarily memorize, but kind of understand the, the outline, and then when you are ready to turn your, 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 you know, turn your life to God, you can kind of, uh, you know, base your own prayer ba based off of the sinner's prayer, but just reading it. I, I, I don't think that is going to work. Like, if you read it, like, okay, I'm saved. Like, I think that you really have to have your heart ready, you know, prepared. Of verse 7. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet, per adventure, per adventure, for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commandeth his love toward us, in that... While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him, and only through him, nothing else. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Oh, interesting. My grandfather wrote down, go to Second Corinthians 5.17-21. through 21. Should we do that? Second, I don't know what Second Corinthians is. Oh, I found it. So he said, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 through 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now, then we are ambassadors for Christ, we speak to the world about Christ as though di uh, excuse me as though God did beseech you by us we pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him wow that's like a like a hit to the face of like so much love that God has. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That was Second Corinthians seventeen or chapter five, verse seventeen through twenty one. So now we're back in Romans verse twelve. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. 
for until for until the loss uh, for until the lost sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there was when there is no law my eyesight verse 14 nevertheless death reigned from adam to moses even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of adam's transgressions who is in the figure of him that was to come but not as the offense so also is the free gift for if through the offenses of one many be dead much more the grace of god and the gift by grace which is by one man jesus christ hath abounded unto many and not as it was by one that sinned so was the gift for the judgment was by one to condemnation but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification for if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more than which received abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one jesus christ therefore as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men of condemnation even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life you know being saved in jesus christ is a free gift and it's and satan makes it so difficult for so many people to see that's a free gift i mean to think about it that living in eternal life with jesus with with no sin no suffering no pain no sadness no suffering that you've ever experienced will ever follow you and it's a free gift i mean have you ever gone to like a coffee shop and you're like wow i can get one of those cake pops it's a free gift from starbucks you know it, it's a simpler it's a simpler an example but it's kind of like wow this is like this doesn't happen but think about it it's it's not just getting a free cake pop from starbucks this is your life being saved and living an eternal life of joy and happiness and seeing those that, you, you know, your family who t trusted in God. Like, this is not a qualification. Like, this is not like calling, you know, you know, 1-800, you know, heaven. And seeing if you're qualified to be in heaven. Everybody is accepted. And not one person will lose that chance. But you have to, but the, 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 uh, the fine print is you only have so much time to accept it. Because once the judgment occurs, well, I wouldn't say the judgment because you still have time. But once God comes down and separates his saved or his sheep from the sinners, you know, you kind of, kind of at loss there. But it's a free gift. Um, I'm gonna stop this real quick. I'll be right back. I'm just—it's kind of running into about 14 minutes. Be right back. I'm back. But think about that. Think about that. Okay, where did we leave off at? I think we left off. Um, we left off at verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through the righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Sorry, I was just kind of like reading my grandfather's, um, you know, his little words here. He, he, you know, I was telling you the other day about my grandfather that he is probably the most righteous person I have ever met. I wasn't kidding. I am not kidding. Like, he is such a, a godly man. 
Yeah, he didn't start out that way. No. I mean, I don't think anybody is. Like, I don't think anybody prior to those that, you know, became saved as a child. Like, like myself, I got saved when I was 11, so I didn't really have a past. But, you know, I mean, everybody who becomes uh, saved later in life, you know, always have that past. But it just shows that God changes you so much. I never knew my grandfather as a sinner. I've always known him as a loving, um, wonderful Christian man. And he kind of, like, taught everybody, you know, um, in, in the family about Christ. And now when I have kids, I'm, I'm going to, you know, teach my kids. And hopefully when they grow up, they'll teach their kids. Unless God takes us home before then. I mean, either way, I'm excited to go to heaven. I'm excited that I got this free gift. And I can't, I mean, I'm going back, I cannot stress. I cannot stress enough of the free gift of eternal life. I mean, it's insane to think about. It seems like there's so many, like, fine print or, like, you know, I don't know, but this is a free gift that everybody is qualified. In fact, in fact, the, the word qualified doesn't it, it doesn't even apply to say qualified because I don't know, it like it, it it is what it is. It's a free gift and everybody will be in heaven if you accept it. You would think there'd be more, uh, you know, saved people, but Satan is, he's, he's crafty and he knows, he knows how to stop people from it, from taking it. Whether making it unknown to them, making it seem like it's harder than it really is. Like, oh man, you have to change everything about who you are. Um, and that's where a lot of people, I think, stumble is the fact they go, I have to change the fact that I'm an alcoholic. I have to change the fact that I'm, you know, addicted to porn. I'm, ad you know, I'm addicted to cigarettes. I mean, I, I don't think, I'm, I'm not saying that drinking alcohol is, is against God. I'm not saying that smoking cigarettes is against God. I mean, I think porn is because it's a form of adultery. But I can't say what is a sin against God unless it's in the Ten Commandments, or if it's from God's uh, mouth, or Christ's mouth. So I can't say. But my point is, is that Satan tells people, gosh, you have a long way to go, you know, because you have to quit everything, everything you love. But the thing is, is that what Satan doesn't tell them is that you are accepted to God, whether you're a porn addict, an alcoholic, a murderer, a rapist, God is going to forgive you for every single thing you've ever done. And he's going to give you the heart to change. And with that, if you're a murderer and a rapist, especially if you're on the run, I'm pretty sure you're going to have the heart to turn yourself in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But... I believe from um, my mom and, and, and other people that Jeffrey Dahmer became a, a, a Christian in prison. And whether that's true or not, I believe it's true because um, my mom had information on it that God is, is not going to judge him upon who he was. He's going to judge him upon what he did the moment he became, he became a Christian till his death. Jeff, uh, he, he may have talked to, to some of his cellmates about Christ, and he's going to be judged upon that. He's never going to judge you on who you were unless you're a sinner. And... But going back to what I was saying, because I, I had to explain myself when it came to saying that murderers and, and rapists, I mean, I pray that, you know, you will change, because I haven't met a single Christian man who's a rapist, so just saying. 
but whether you're an alcoholic, a, uh, a porn addict, a smoker, a drug user, God is going to help you. He's not going to watch you suffer. There are some times where God tests you and you do suffer. But patience is also called long-suffering for a reason. Because you're climbing that mountain. And once you reach the top, God blesses you in many ways. I've, I've had to climb so many mountains, especially when I first moved out. Because, you know, I, cause I didn't have someone to, to watch grow up. You know, like, I, how do I say this? I, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, like, I don't know how to pay bills. I don't know how to do anything, but God help me through it. Okay, I, I think I'm rambling here. I'm, I'm, I'm missing my point, but I hope you see where I'm coming from. Anyway, you guys, this is a long video. I hope you guys have a wonderful night. Um, I love you all, and know that the free gift is always there for you. But be wise. Don't just look at it and think, you know, I got, I'm only like 21 years old. I, I, I have a whole life ahead of me. You don't know if you have tomorrow. Take that gift now. Don't let Satan get in the way. Do it. All right, guys. Good night. Bye.